Hi guys, Doyle Williams, the tactical preacher here, working with tactical response and trying to help keep some videos going. And uh, one of the things I want to show you today and under the category of bushcraft would be my hiking stick. I call it a snake charmer. I made it in 1981. And uh, there's the date that I carved in it at that time. And uh, I had seen a friend of mine. Uh, his name was Toby Aird. And uh, at Toby's house, he had a, a snake skin on the wall. I said, man, how would you get that? He said, well, I used my, my snake stick. I said, what are you talking about? And he brought out this homemade stick where he had, uh, I mean, a hiking stick that he'd made himself. And he had it rigged up where he could pull a noose out of it at the bottom. And so that's how he caught the snake, killed it, and uh, skinned it out and did all of that. So I said, I want one of those. So over near Chickamauga Creek there in Chattanooga where I was living, I found this old mop handle. And uh, I got it and I carved in it and put snake charmer on it and all that other stuff. And then I began to work on it. Um, I made... See if I can get this off without too much trouble. I use a leather. Now it has to be replaced every year because it's just not going to last long. They dry rot real bad and everything. It's probably I needed to use a different material, maybe a piece of steel wire or something. But anyway, and then I can, you know, work this from up. And I've caught many a snake in there. I've caught rattlesnakes. I've caught uh, copperheads. I've caught all kinds of different snakes with it. And um, it's just the most important part of a hiking stick is balance. And the older I get, the more important that is. You see all these hikers a lot of the times on these trails, and they'll be doing 90 miles an hour going down that trail, and they'll have these trekking poles. Well, that's all well and good. I don't, I'm not going to go that fast on the trail. I'm not trying to get the cardio out of it. And uh, the other thing is I'm just wanting to enjoy the hike. But I want to make sure I do get to enjoy the hike. So this gives me extra balance. It gives me, an, you know, if I need to have somebody help pull me up a hill or something like that, it's an extra extension of your arm. I also carry a knife on here, which is, you know, we all know the many purposes of a knife as far as, you know, camping and hiking and other things. So it's, it's there for survival. I carry a fire starter on here, carry a compass on here. So I've got a lot of different things that I can use for, for survival. I've got a uh, paracord on here and uh, you know just a lot of different things that will, will help me in that respect. But over the years, I've used it to hike along a lot of different trails. I've caught a lot of different snakes with it. One time at uh, my daughter's elementary school up in North Carolina, uh, while I was in seminary up there, I went to pick her up. And everybody was running away from this door and just hollering and getting all excited. And I said, I got out of the truck and I said, what's wrong? He said, there's a snake over there by the door trying to get into school and school's about to let out in just a few minutes. So I walked over there and it was a, you know, three and a half, four foot long black snake. And I said, all right. And I had just happened to have my hiker in the, uh, in the, in the truck. So here I go. Now my biggest fear was being embarrassed and I had a conversation with that snake I said look I won't hurt you if you won't hurt me or cause me to hurt myself black snakes are not poisonous or anything but they can sure make you wish you hadn't bothered them so anyway I opened up the noose and got over there and he was just zigzagging back and forth in front of the door and so finally I got him still enough where he finally ran through that noose and I didn't catch him right behind the head I caught him about halfway. Now, I told you that snake was pretty long. So here he was able to get up to me. So I was having to hold it way back here to carry him. And so I carried him to the wood line and uh, released him. And after I caught him, everybody applauded. So that was my moment in history that I was an actual hero. But uh, my daughter was very proud of me that day. But, uh, you know, it served, a, it served a purpose. You know, I didn't have to kill that snake, and I didn't. And uh, I took it and released it, and it was just uh, it was a good thing. 
but I, I really enjoy having a hiking stick with me wherever because, you know, it helps keep you steady on the trail. And that's one of the most important things. It gives me another option as far as survival. And like I say, I carry a fire starter and several other things with it. Um, I've got a lot of these, uh, probably see it on this camera here. A lot of these from the different trails. Let's see, I've got the Appalachian Trail. I've got Rainbow Falls and a lot of different ones. Clingman's Dome and uh, Nathan Bedford Forest State Park. A lot of different things on here. I don't know that I really like them on my stick. I think it kind of looks corny but those are some of the trails i've hiked and so i wanted them on there so anyway they're there but it's uh it's a useful tool and a lot of people you know have hiking sticks of all kinds i like the ones that you make yourselves um, my dad showed me years ago and i've got it at the house i've got a walking stick which is like a cane that um, we went and i think it was a dogwood tree and we went and uh, dug up the dogwood tree to the roots, pulled it up, and then began to trim all the excess roots away. And you use that as the handle. And so we've been making hiking sticks and walking sticks for a long time. And I've got my favorite one at the house. I'll bring it and do a video on it one day. But anyway, it uh, you know having a homemade hiker uh, is a lot of fun. Having it where it does more than one purpose. Being able to catch a snake without having to shoot it and move it and, and transport it to another place and get rid of it or get it out of the campsite area or something like that can be a very important thing. So this one has been a, a real asset to me. I've had it since 1981 and um, it's been a, you know, just a real, a real good tool to have. So I wanted to show you all that because we talk about bushcraft. We talk about building a fire and we talk about, being able to uh, baton wood and be able to, to do all kinds of things. Well, this is one of the other tools that is that really comes in handy. And having that knife there is a convenient place because a lot of times when you've got a backpack on and everything else, it's hard to reach your tools that you need. Now, when I would get to the campsite, I used an old traditional frame backpack. Now, it's got a frame that comes up over and above the pack. And... Um, I would, you know, put my sleeping bag on there, put my tent on there or whatever. Now that I use a Hennessy hammock, uh, it goes down inside the bag. But I have, uh, you know, the, the bedroll on that. Well, when I get to the campsite, I take my hiking stick and turn it this way. And I lean that rail right into this. And that becomes a leg for that backpack to where I can stand my backpack up and be able to get into it. Now, if I hung it up on a tree like my son-in-law does his I can't get into the top of it to get in and so I don't have side access to the big pockets and so by having it lower and it's got legs that stick up off the ground so it's not sitting right on the ground it gives me a convenient way and then that way that sticks right there and if I need my hiker I just move the the backpack over to a tree or whatever but having it like this I can set that backpack wherever I want to and have it where I need it as opposed to not so pretty cool so i'm just thankful for for this stick it has probably saved my life more times than not and definitely kept me from taking a bad fall so look i want to remind everybody your responsibility to be ready for the fight never ends